Welcome to the Untold Story podcast, everybody. I'm Martha McCallum. And, you know, we're just a few days out from Christmas. It's kind of a special time of year. And I think there are a lot of emotions that surround Christmas, some great ones and some hard ones for people as well. And I'm very happy to be joined by my dear friend Dana Perino today to talk about some books to talk about things that you might want to settle in and read over these holidays or some you might want to put on your list for 2024. I think of all my friends, Dana is probably the most avid reader and I don't know how she finds uh, enough time to fit in everything she gets. So I just love to download from her and hear Mm -hmm. what she's thinking. So welcome, Dana. Well, thank you so much. We did this before. Was it last? Was it a year ago? I think it was. Yeah. Wow. No, no, we did a summer one, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that was a summer one. So I don't know if this might overlap a little bit from the summer ones, if I had to do like my top five. But it's funny that you say that I'm in a race right now, race with myself. I'm going to Spain. Yeah. um, On the Friday night before Christmas. Okay. And I am... I'm reading a book called The Time in Between by Maria Duneas. It's fabulous. She's mm-hmm. great at historical fiction. This is the first book I've read of hers. My friend Ingrid recommended the book, the series for me. It's got The Time in Between, and it's historical fiction about the Spanish Civil War and the lead up to the World War II, told from a perspective in Madrid and Morocco. But it's 609 pages, and I'm definitely more than two thirds of the way there. Good for you. But I'm not going to finish it. I'm trying to finish it before I go on that trip. Yes. Because do I leave 100 pages to go and come back and then try to read it on the other end, like start another book or not? Or because I'm trying to deal with the weight situation of my bag. Okay. Okay. Because I read hard copy book. Okay. So you don't have a Kindle that you could load it down to because... no. I yeah. guess I guess I, I like to read hard copy books too, but I but just for for this reason. I also I'll put it on Audible. I kind of put it everywhere now. I love Audible. On Audible. So much. I'll put it on my Kindle, yes. and then it's kind of somewhere. When you have the whisper grab it. sync. Yes, that work. That's a great. It's great because great then you open the Kindle and it says, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think you're actually on page six hundred and seventy two. <laughs> do you want me to go there? Yes, yes I please. do. I, yeah. That's a great. That was a great invention. That yes. might be one of the best inventions. One of the reasons I wanted. I wanted to get off of the electronics when reading at night because I yeah. found that I wasn't going to sleep. It affects And my your, Kindle, I use it on an app like. on my phone. And then I'm like, hmm, maybe I should do some online shopping in the middle of this. Same. The next thing I know, I know I'm like, oh, now I have to get up and get my credit card. I know. No, you're complete. <laughs> well, unless you're like me and you have it memorized, so it's no problem. <laughs> I, well, mine has been hacked so many times that I basically have to go back and I'm like, I, I, I can have most of the card. What I can't remember is a security code. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably a, good, a thing. good thing to have to actually go physically get the card. I've left a lot of things in a cart. Yeah. Just been like, ah, never mind. It's yeah. not, it's, but I know what it's you not mean. worth it. Um, any electronic device and you're going to start, um, you know skitzing into all different kinds of things uh, yep. rather than just reading the book. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is how many books do you think you read in 2023? Do you keep track? I do keep track mostly because I do love this, that people will come to me and say, I'm going on vacation and they want a book recommendation. Right. And I can't necessarily always remember the books that I've read. So yes. I do, I keep a a, a list, list in my notes app and I've kept, I've had it for several years now so I can go back and all I do is I just include the title. Yeah. And this year, <laughs> this, year's, look at this is so embarrassing. Wow. Look at this. No, that's impressive. It's I had not a good year. I had a good year. I think I got 68 books done wow. this year. But you know, I, I mostly read fiction. Yeah. So I can whip through that. Mm-hmm. I include books that I listen to. Um, I listened to one called I Am, I Am, I Am by Lizzie O'Farrell, who wrote Hamnet. Oh, yeah. And I Am, I Am, I Am is a nonfiction book of essays that she wrote. And I like if there's a book of essays written by an author that I like, I enjoy listening to those. Mm-hmm. So I have one to recommend um, in this great. book, too. So, yeah, I've had a, I've had a great year of reading. There's one I actually didn't put on this list, but I thought that you might like it. It's called The Christie Affair. And okay. it's historical fiction loosely based about Agatha Christie in real life. She went missing for a f- few weeks. Really? And nobody knew where she That's was. And it was always a mystery, like her whole life. Like, did she have an affair? Did she go and mm. uh, write a book while she was away? Did she? So it's a fictionalized account of that. And it's a good little mystery. And it's oh, set in fun. England, I which get I know that for you for my love. son for Christmas. He's a big 
um, Agatha Christie. Oh. Yeah, he loves I wish I could uh, remember mysteries. the author, but yes. I'll so, find it. I'll find it. I'm trying to remember if in the summer, I'm, I'll tell you the top fiction books that I read this year. I think I might have already talked about this on this podcast before, but it certainly held up because we talked about some in, in the summer. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver is a showstopper of a book. I just started it. I just started I love, it. I love the character development. Yeah. I love this kid. And you just root for him the whole way. Mm-hmm. It has a gentle landing, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not going to say it's the happiest yeah, ending, it. but there's a gentle landing. And a lot of people loved that book. It was a big bestseller. It takes place in the Appalachian region where Barbara Kingsolver, who is the author, lives. And so she understands sort of the cadence of the dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue, which people like to read you know, super quick. Um, it does have to do with the opioid addiction crisis that really started in that area. And you learn why and how. Mm. But the characters you come to really care about a lot. Or not, right? Yeah. Um, or you just, or you dislike them so much, but you're rooting for this young man. His name is Demon. He's, mm-hmm. It's his. It's his nickname. And there is an interview that Barbara Kingsolver. Barbara Kingsolver. She did an interview on the uh, Ezra Klein podcast. So after you finish mm-hmm. the book, I would recommend that. What I was so pleased with is I recommended that book to Charlie Hurt. Uh, he's obviously one of our colleagues here. He lives in Southern Virginia. He doesn't read a ton of fiction, but if I give him a recommendation, he will say yes, and he loved it. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm in that category too. I don't read a lot of fiction early on. As I said, I just started it, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of The Glass Castle or Owen Meany, which oh, I Oh, I loved Owen Meany. Oh my gosh, my husband so and I bonded over that when we were dating. Yeah. Um, what I didn't know until I read a review, I don't usually read reviews until after I've read yeah. the book. I don't know, that's a weird thing, I guess. Um, no, I don't like reading reviews of anything because I and, really agree with them. Yes. I didn't know that Demon Copperhead is based on Charles Dickens. Basically, sort of the way that he she, she writes um, is about great expectations, I believe. Or David Copperfield. David Copperfield. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. David Copperfield. Yeah, I remember you telling me that, which I it stuck with me. And then another friend of mine said that it was his favorite book of the year. So I was like, okay, I'm downloading this right now. Oh, I'll tell you a book that I didn't like. It was the new John Grisham book. Oh, really? It's called The Exchange. It's the sequel to uh, A Time to Kill or The Firm. A sequel okay. to The Firm. He never wrote a sequel to The oh. Firm. Even sure. though if you remember at the end of that book, it's ripe for one because Mitch... And his wife end right. up on that island and yeah. they're safe and they have all the money. Mm-hmm. There's no sequel, right? So then this year he comes out with the sequel. I was so excited. I bought it. I read that book. and I was like, about 20 pages to the end. And I'm thinking, isn't there supposed to be a catch? Right. Isn't it it's supposed to be like the guy at the law firm or somebody or something I missed? Or, no, it just ends. And then yeah. I went back and read the review. And I was like, oh, wow. I never would have bought that book. Right. If I had read the review If you had before. read the review. Mm-mm. <laughs> So if um, somebody's taking some a week off, maybe if we're lucky enough um, to have the week between Christmas and New Year's mm-hmm. and they can pick five books mm-hmm. that they want to read or that they might think, oh, maybe that's a perfect last minute gift for this person or that person. What would be on your uh, fiction list okay. for those five, Dana? So I have a friend named Patty Callahan Henry. She writes, she wrote this, um, she wrote Becoming Mrs. Lewis which is the fictional account of the woman who became the wife of C.S. Lewis. Oh. It is a spectacular book. You would absolutely yeah, love it. This book's right up your character. alley. She's an interesting character. Yes, she's a very interesting person. The way that she, they started as pen pals, basically. Mm. She was mm-hmm. in a terrible marriage, and she ends up ultimately becoming his wife, and he adopted her children. Patty absolutely outdid herself in that book. And she usually writes a lot about sort of um, in the Pat Conroy st- style. She's from Alabama and South Carolina, so she usually writes along those lines. But she wrote a book this year called The Secret Book of Flora Lee. And this takes place in war-torn England, and it's about the kids that had to be sent to the countryside. And it's about these two sisters, but it f- takes place between that period of like 1939 and then present day. Flora Lee has gone missing and what has happened. And then you find out and is she really missing? You know, no, you don't ex- necessarily know, but it's a story about these two sisters who love each other very much. And I thought that book was excellent. I'm not the only one. Uh, Barnes and Noble just put it on their top book of the year list. So if you go to Barnes and Noble yeah. right now, it's on the table. Yeah. 
that's a Great. huge accomplishment for her. I also just read a book I adored. It didn't come out this year, but people might be familiar with Paula McLean. Mm-hmm. She wrote um, The Paris Wife. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So she does historical fiction. She's fabulous. Actually, interestingly, she and Patty Henry are very good friends. Paula McLean wrote a book called Love and Ruin. And I think you would love this book, too, because it is about... Do you recognize the woman's name, Martha Gellhorn, Marty Gellhorn? No. She was one of the first women foreign correspondents, foreign war correspondents. Mm -hmm. She meets Hemingway. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. They have an affair. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing story about a look into who Hemingway was, who is a very complicated person. Mm -hmm. And the thrill of her life was being a part of his life. But she kept her drive and she was told no so many times about going to cover the war but she did it and i didn't know that she i didn't know what a an amazing accomplished reporter journalist she was way before her time breaking a lot of barriers for what you and i do today yeah i loved it it's called love and ruin love and ruin that sounds amazing. Fabulous. I, I, th- that. I think yeah. that you would love it. I also came across a book i didn't know about before but it has something to do with a preview book that I'll tell you about at the end of this podcast. It's called Shotgun Love Songs by Nicholas Butler. And it takes place in a small Wisconsin town and it is very atmospheric. And it makes you just, if you've ever spent any time in the Midwest, or if you haven't, that's one of the great things about fiction. It takes you right there. The descriptions are amazing. All the different characters are great. Mm -hmm. The friendships, it's about friendships. It's about one guy in town had a dream to become a rock star and everyone in town was rooting for him and he makes it. But what you know, fame does to people or it changes them over time really matters. And this book was just absolutely that sounds like such gorgeous. An and I love Subject the title. Matter. Shotgun Love Songs is mm-hmm. the name of an album that the guy comes out with. So that, oh, I love that, that one. one. Very intriguing to me. Another one that came highly recommended to me by our very own Madison Allworth, who's one of my mentees here at Fox. And she recommended Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. That book did come out this year. It takes place in the Northwest. And it's about this woman who has lost her husband and her son has died years and years before. And she is a cleaning lady at an aquarium. And she, just stick with me, guys. She becomes friendly with an octopus. And they have they are able to communicate with each other. But it's really the story about what happened to her son and how he disappeared. Mm. And it's a beautiful, wonderful mm, story. Beautiful. Again, very atmospheric. I haven't spent time in the, in the Northwest for quite a few years, and it was nice to, to take that trip. And I believe I might have mentioned my last one on fiction. It's a monster of a book, but it's, it's very good. Covenant of Water mm-hmm. by Abraham Vergesi. He wrote... Oh, what was the one that I loved? Cutting for Stone. If you love Audible and you can spend the time, I didn't realize he reads it. I love that. The that author makes such a difference. He reads I think. the fictional account and he pours his heart into it. Mm-hmm. I read the book. I had long flights in July. Went back and forth a couple of times across the country. Read the whole thing in a week, and I absolutely loved it. About southwestern India and a whole like life story over the course of a century. I, that book has been on the top of the bestseller lists, I think, all year, right? Mm-hmm. Oprah Winfrey said it was in the top three books she's ever read in her life. Wow. Well, that'll do it. That's why I bought it. <laughs> That's why I bought it. That'll do it. Mm-hmm. The Untold Story continues right after this. And you have some nonfiction for I us. I do. I, I'm going to recommend one that I think you would love. Maybe you already read it. Did you? I think you already read it. The Kid Stays in the Picture. Oh, I love that book. By Robert Evans. Yeah, that's my that's that's an easy, like, my kind of book story. So did you know that he reads it, the yes. Audible? yeah. My husband and I listened to it going back and forth uh, to the shore because yeah. we watched The Offer on Netflix. Right, right. And I don't know a lot about The Godfather. And I didn't know anything yeah. about Robert Evans, um, but this is about, uh, this is a true Hollywood story. And he spills all the tea in this book. Yeah, I um I've always thought Robert Evans was fascinating when I was a little kid. I was sort of I had two older sisters, they're 7 and 8 years older than I am. So, um 
they were super into, you know, Ally McGraw and all of those kinds of 70s characters. Mm -hmm. And so I always had an awareness of Robert Evans when Mm -hmm. I was a little kid. And I just thought that that I love and I love the guy that plays him. He's such a good actor. The guy from Downton Abbey. Yes. Matthew. I'm trying to think Mm -hmm. of his last name, but he's he's really he's really good. And um, I recommend the kids days in the picture. It's great. Absolutely. I read a book called Die With Zero. This is the subtitle is Getting All You Can from Your Money and Your Life by Bill Perkins. Um, he basically is saying that everyone is freaking out and over saving for their retirement. And that really? they're not. Usually you hear exactly the opposite. Right. So he is saying, now obviously this is, I can read this book because I have a nice 401k, I have a nest egg, et cetera. But he's basically saying, and he lays it out very logically for somebody like me who grew up with financial anxiety. Like I always think, even today, I wake up and think all my money is going to go away tomorrow. I I just have lived that way. Mm -hmm. But this book really taught me to say, step back, be logical. Mm -hmm. Because Peter can tell me a hundred times over the course of a week, we were fine. It's fine. If you lose your job tomorrow, we are going to be fine. And I'm thinking, nope, I'm going to be on the street, huddled. Like with the soup. So the psychology of money is very interesting. Uh, And I think that um, most successful couples need to have one person who feels the way you do. I'm mm -hmm. I'm the other one. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, enjoy it while you've got it. Let's, you know, I've always um, I'm not the fortunately, my husband is the careful saver, but you got to have one in the couple. for sure. This story or this book is really about um, it challenges these traditional thoughts about financial wisdom. And it says Here's why you should spend the money now. It even talks about children. Like, for example, you might you might want to save a lot in order to donate or give it to your children after you mm-hmm. die. His point is, but they can use it now mm-hmm. when they need it. Is now by the time you pass away, they're going to be in their fifties or sixties, and they'll have gone through all of those hard times. So, if you're thinking that you have the money that you want to give to them later, help them buy the house now. Right. Um, I he, think that's. He also says, why wait to give if you if you are philanthropic minded don't wait until you're gone to enjoy watching somebody benefit from the donations that you could give today Um, and he talks a lot about experiences like spend Mm -hmm. money on experiences go and do things and I told Peter die with zero well we just might at this rate (laughs) because I have embraced this philosophy but I, I did think it really helped me to calm down about finances which I know it sounds weird obviously I'm I know Logically, I'm fine, but in my gut, I don't. No, feel well, that's that way. why I say I think that it's such a psychological thing, and your mindset and your you know experience as a young person um, feeds into that. So it doesn't matter how successful you are or how unsuccessful you are. Anxiety over finances is a universal human emotion. I think. Yep, and it can really take a toll on a relationship, mm. right? So yeah. I I recommend if you are going to read this that both parties both the bo- yeah. both people in a relationship need to read it um, and if you're a single person I think it is very very helpful he talks about how people who retire at the age of 65 mm-hmm. let's say they have $500,000 in the bank that they will die with around $485,000 in the bank right because your money keeps growing and what but you think yeah. it's not going to no, I think I think it's a great point. And Guy Fieri, the chef, mm-hmm. this week I was just reading a piece on him telling his kids that he wanted them to have two degrees and then he might leave them some money. Otherwise, he said he's not leaving them anything. And, you know, Warren Buffett famously has talked about not leaving his kids right. his fortune. Um, so I think if I bring home die with zero and leave it around the house, my kids might get a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know what? It doesn't put everybody no, that's like, not a bad pay attention. No, my, right. my kids are, they're very responsible. Of course they are. Actually. This is the one that I want. I definitely want you to read this book. And I think you'd love it on Audible. Actually, this is a, another friend of Patty Callahan Henry. It is called I Miss You When I Blink. Mm-hmm. Essays on Motherhood. And it's by a woman named Mary Laura Philpot. And this book is bittersweet. It is joyful. It is freaking hilarious sometimes. I, she's just so funny. And it really helps anyone who has ever loved, worried, and marveled at the miracle of motherhood, as I know you have, or for somebody like me who has not had children, but I feel like I have a lot of nieces and nephews sort of scattered around all over the world because of my friendships. Uh, I thought this book was spectacular. I think she's such a great writer, a terrific writer, very self-deprecating, 
fabulous book. I miss you when I blink is something one of her kids said to her at one point. Oh, isn't that sweet? That's so sweet. That is so sweet. So I highly okay, recommend that's that on my one. list. Now, coming I'm stealing your whole list by the coming way. Coming to you in 2024, a book that I think for guys, I loved it too, but like imagine Hardy Boys mystery mm-hmm. uh, but adult version. There's an author named Andrew Graff, G R A F F. He wrote a book a couple of years ago called Raft of Stars. And I don't know how I first came upon this novel. It's a debut novel. He was a veteran. He is a veteran, a military veteran. He comes back from war and he goes to the Iowa... What's that thing called? The MFA where everybody goes and then they you, you go to this fictional or this fiction oh, workshop. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's called the, great, it's, it's Iowa great MFA school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, oh, he goes there and he writes Raft of Stars, which is this amazing, fabulous story. I bet it's really good on Audible too. But I read I read it. It is about these two boys who get themselves caught up in an adventure that they didn't anticipate, but they have to survive in the wild while somebody's coming after them and other people are looking for them. And you learn about why. And it is a, just a, you can't put it down. So I had reached out to him and I said, this book is amazing. And I recommended it to a lot of people. He has a new book coming out January 9th or something like that. It's called True North. And it's a novel as well. And it's about marriage and this small community in Wisconsin that is trying to survive the modern world. And it's a lot about white. I always have, why do I have t- trouble saying this word? White water rafting. <laughs> oh, and yeah. so the atmospherics are great. The characters are absolutely amazing. And it's about two people who work their way through some troubles in order to keep their family together. And I absolutely That's loved true it. North true north and another one that's fiction and then the nonfiction book i recommend that's coming out also i believe january 9th it's called turning inward by ross rayburn if you are a peloton person you might recognize his name he is the lead instructor for the yoga program and the meditation so this is called turning inward and it really is about how you can figure out a way to quiet yourself Mm -hmm. even in the midst of a ton of chaos and I find the book very accessible. He's got a great way with words. He's from Texas originally, and he really understands how to help you probe those inner depths. We're entering a pretty tumultuous year. Mm -hmm. 2024 election year is going to be something to write about (laughs) at some point. So I really like this book because there's some really easy, enjoyable techniques that you can figure out how to keep yourself sane in the middle of the chaos. That's that's cool. I, I like that it's a Peloton related yes. uh, recommendation. <laughs> I, I you know like everything else in life, I go down. You know, I, I do workouts with Olivia mm-hmm. and Callie. They're sort of my two go-to people, but I have flipped by him. Oh, I love many Ross Rayburn. So I love him. So I'm going to check he out tells, Ross. He tells a lot of corny jokes during yeah. yoga, which I enjoy. <laughs> I, so I, he and I connected because he knows I love books. And I had mentioned, I had, I had DM'd him at some point on Instagram because he told a joke that he thought nobody would think was funny, but I was thought, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> there are like a lot of dad jokes. And so we write back and forth. He says, I, you know, I would love to bring a copy of my book by. And I said, oh, I would love to read Turning Inward. Now, I don't know him yet. Yeah. right? I think that he and I are going to be friends and right. I'm, I'm going to get to get to see him soon. But he, <laughs> I, I said, I would love to read Turning Inward. This would be great. And I sent the text. Martha, Apple corrected it. Instead of it saying Turning Inward, I-N-W-A-R-D, Apple autocorrected it to N, capital N, the letter, hyphen word w-o-r-d as if i had ever said that in my life oh my gosh i was mortified that's i don't so know bizarre. him i know i don't know I, him no there's a whole <laughs> yeah that that's crazy so we had a yeah. good laugh about it but anyway it was a good reminder to check your text to messages check, before no, you it, press it, send. It is, no it's so scary I, and lately i feel like things that i literally am just thinking about are showing up as um ads and promos to me literally oh, oh yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah, 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 yeah i i i really feel like that's i funny though that i don't get any didn't say books anything my way because yeah. I talk about and think about books all the time but I, I, maybe they're not, maybe yeah, they're, they're not marketing yet that but what weird. about you do you have any recommendations well, you know, for me I sort of had a unique year this year because I had um, 
you know, never read the Bible in my life. So I decided to commit on January 1st of last year to do Bible wow. in a year. So I have been, I'm almost finished with wow. Bible in a year and it's on the Hallow app with Father Mike Schmidt. So I've been spending like that half hour on my way home every night when I ordinarily might have been reading a mm-hmm. book doing that. And then I layer that with, um, a trip to Israel and the book, James Michener's The Source, which is like 900 Mm -hmm. and something pages, which Dana would have read, you know, on a flight (laughs) to Colorado. But so I'm sort of layering all of these things together, which has been really incredible for me. So this year, I feel like I have learned so much more about history of this era of the Middle East and um, the Old Testament, which I didn't have great familiarity with, and how it all fits together. So that's just been an immersive experience for me this year. But I just downloaded. Amazing. Yeah, hello. It's, I haven't it's signed an amazing, up yet. It's an amazing app. There's a million different choices on there of things that you can do. And one of the things that I've done, and they do meditations that are great for breathing and mm-hmm. all of that, things that help you fall asleep at night. All kinds of, really but it's cool spiritually stuff. based, right? Yes, so it I is. love that. That's um, why I downloaded it. Um, I think Caroline was mentioning it to me. How so? How long per day do you need to do it for? So the Bible in a year, I would say it's like twenty to twenty-eight minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I got to warn you, it's very. <laughs> The Old Testament is, there's a lot, it's very, very dense. There's a lot of Mm -hmm. long lists of ancestry. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of, you know, how to build (laughs) this by this many cubits and that many cubits. It's very specific (laughs) in the Old Testament about um, how, but, you know, so what I would say if people want to take this on is there are days when you're just going to kind of let it wash over you. And there are days when you're going to be listening to the, to every detail and that's okay. You know, you just just want to kind of, uh, I just found it to be an incredible learning experience. So Hmm. that. Um, was my kind of comprehensive deep dive all year long, which has been an amazing um, journey, really. And so this year, we're going to Austria over the mm. break, which I'm really Ooh, excited about. Vienna? I did a semester there, yeah, when I was in college, and I haven't been back since. Are you going to the concert? We're going to Vienna for a couple of days, no, because mm. we're going to be in um, skiing okay. on New Year's. So we're going to be over there for for New Year's, but I have been watching, my husband and I have been watching The Empress, which is the story of Franz Joseph and Elizabeth, which is a really good series. She was a piece of work. Yes, she was, that I um, really recommend. And then Dana just gave me a book on Ludwig Bemelman, who was Mm -hmm. born in Austria and who came on a ship at the age of 15 to New York and then developed all the Madeline books, which have always been my favorite children's books. I still have like, I have first edition Madeline books that are part of a collection that I have that is just really, really special to me. So I was delighted that you gave me that Mm -hmm. and I'm going to read that on the way there. So um, it's kind of, it's interesting to dig into different genres. How's the Mishner book? It's fascinating. It's about a group of British archaeologists who go to a certain plateau in Israel and they're on a dig and then it it weaves back and forth between them in their modern, Mm -hmm. it's like 1950s, Mm -hmm. and each layer. So it starts with the cavemen layer. Wow. Oh, I would love this. And then it goes through all of these uh, stratums of of different times. So the story of the Greeks, the Romans, everybody who was in that area, and you get to know all these characters as it kind of bounces back and forth between the stories. I find that during election years, I read fewer books than I would would like. Yeah. Um, So I kind of hit it hard this year, but... Good for you. This year, I I, want to do this Bible in a year. Uh, Exercise. I think this would be wonderful. I've had a couple of friends. I don't know if they've always done it with with the Hello app, but I'm going to try it with that. I just downloaded it, so I might as well give it a shot. I had always thought, oh, someday I'm going to do a Bible study. Never Mm -hmm. got around to it. And so for me, it was a really accessible way to to do it. And Father Mike Schmidt is super easy to listen to, and he's funny. Oh, that's good. He keeps it. um, And kind of at the end of the readings, he says he kind of highlights here are the things you really want to. Remember take away from this, from this. and take uh-huh. away. So he summarizes it, I think, in a really fun and interesting way. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'll be curious to see what you think. My dad's trying to do it. He's like, oh my gosh, this is pretty, <laughs> this is pretty rough. I'm like, well, it's, 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 it's the Bible. How's that chapter you know? that goes, I, I don't know what to tell you. Begat and begat and begat. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
But yeah, it's all interesting. But I, I just thank you so much for thank joining you. me today. I always love it's it so when fun to I talk about get it. to pick Dana Perino's brain and talk about books. And I've got a bunch of things jotted down here that I'm going to probably order right after we mm-hmm. I get back to my office. And as you say, I mean, we, we read a lot for work every day. Yep. So I don't know how you find so much time to get in all this other reading. Well, I but do I commend read, you. I do read fairly quickly. And also, yeah, I just remind wonderful. everyone, I'm not raising children. Yeah, but everybody's busy. It doesn't I matter. Know. You're extremely busy busy woman and you managed to fit in a lot every day so yeah. I give you a lot of credit and I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas to you. We're going to have a great year in 2024 we, for we sure. We are. It's going to be a big year and I look forward to spending lots of time with you mm-hmm. and thank you so much oh, for Oh yeah, we'll be on today. the road. Have a great Christmas everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You've been listening to The Untold Story with Martha McCallum. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Make sure to rate and review. For more podcasts, go to foxnewspodcast.com. Listen ad-free with the Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts. And Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app.